part two. Managing your calendar. Use the calendar area on the dashboard to quickly review the current events, assignments, and personal reminders for the day. Use the next and previous arrows to switch to a different date or click the calendar icon to select a different month and year. Click view more to view the current date, the week, or month in a grid format. You can also access the same page by choosing calendar from the left-hand navigation menu. As a teacher, you can add events that are viewable by students and parents. These might include any activities that could impact your classroom, such as early dismissal or club pictures. Personal reminders are private to your calendar and will not be viewable to parents and students. So your note to stop by Walmart after work will not result in students trying to find you there that afternoon. Navigate to the dashboard to add an event to your calendar. Use the plus symbol next to events. You must enter an event name, for example, club pictures. Enter a description of your event, such as club pictures will be held in the gym this afternoon at 310. You will have the option to share this event to the single class you are currently working with. Or you can select the gear icon and choose to associate the event to some or all of your classes. You will find calendar icons that allow you to determine how long you want to run your event. By default, events are set to occur all day. If you want to add a specific time, toggle the specific time setting on. You can then set the time. Personal reminders are created the same way as events, but again, they are personal to you. Likewise, when your students log into their Unified Classroom dashboard, they have the option to create their own personal reminders that you will not be able to see. Also available in your calendar is an assignment area. You will note that you cannot create assignments here, but if you recall, you have the plus button at the top right hand side of this screen that allows you to create your assignments. That button appears on multiple pages. In the calendar itself, you will see any assignments due on the day, week, or month you are viewing. Recent Assignments To the right of your calendar, you can access your recent assignments. This is just a quick grab bag of assignments and is not necessarily a complete list. By hovering over any assignment in this part of the dashboard, you will discover that a few gray icons appear as quick links. The eyeball takes you into a deeper view of that assignment. You will pull up a page that lists the students to whom this assignment has been given. You can view their marks, their flags, and read comments here. The paperclip icon will take you into a view of the assignment that will show you the description of the assignment and allow you to access any attachments to that assignment. The calculator option allows you to jump to a page where you can enter marks for your students. And finally, the pencil icon will allow you to edit the assignment details and parameters. If you click view all, you will be taken to a complete list of assignments. Activity feed. Below the recent assignments area of your dashboard, you will find an activity feed area. This provides a mean of communicating with your students and their parents. Only the teacher can add items to the activity feed on the dashboard. There will be many opportunities for students to participate in a back and forth communication tool within the learning product of Unified Classroom. You will learn about those features at another time. Perhaps you need to reattach a copy of the field trip permission slip because you know half your class already lost theirs and are going to need to print another. Feel free to use the activity feed as it makes sense for you in your class. To add an item to the activity feed, you will click on the blue post text. This activates a text box into which you may type whatever it is you would like to relay. You have rich text options and can make text bold or add pictures or links or change the font size. Play around with these options. Once the text box is activated, you will find that you have button options to attach documents or assignments to your post. To attach a document, click the paperclip icon. 
To associate an assignment with your post, click on the paper icon. You can post to one class or multiple if you choose the gear icon to select additional classes. Finally, click post to post your message to the feed. On the left-hand side of your page, in the navigation menu, you have a link called communication. This opens up an extended view of your activity feed and allows you to access past posts. Reviewing student progress to drive your instruction. By default, standards and traditional progress information is viewable on the dashboard. Use this area to quickly assess if students are meeting required benchmarks. It may be necessary to adjust the lesson plan based on this information or create a reminder to meet with a few select students who are struggling with particular concepts. Click View All in the Standards Progress or Traditional Progress area for further analysis. Click the Unified Classroom logo to return to the dashboard. For teachers not using both standards and traditional grades, modify the display settings to show only the progress area you use. How to work with display settings is discussed later in this training. Evaluating student success using traditional grading progress. On the dashboard, in the traditional grades area, you get a quick glimpse of how your class is performing. Click View All to open the traditional grades progress page or from the navigation menu, choose Analysis. Then choose traditional progress from the sub-menu that appears. The graph on the traditional grades progress page shows the distribution of grades for the class for the selected reporting term. There is a demarcation line in this image separating students considered progressing or not at risk from those who are at risk. You are giving numbers letting you know how many students are in green or in the orange or etc. To the right of the graph, view a summary of the total number of students who have missing, late, or incomplete assignments. To view the grades in each grade scale color level, click the information eye icon. When viewing this grade distribution report and determining that students are in the orange or red levels, levels that denote the student is at risk, a teacher will usually immediately ask, who are these students at risk? Well, you don't have to wonder who they are for very long. Click View All to open the traditional grades distribution window. On the left side of the window that opens up on the top of your screen, you can view and compare the grade distribution for your various reporting terms in the school year. Hopefully, you will see an upward trend. On the right side of this window, you can see your students' names listed and color mapped to their performance. The at-risk students will appear at the top of this list. You can also compare trends on whether a student is progressing or digressing in this traditional grade progress view. By clicking on different terms on the left-hand side of the page, you will find that arrows appear indicating if a student is trending upward or downward. A red arrow in the grade column indicates that the student's grade is dropping between the selected terms. A green arrow indicates an upward trend. No arrow indicates no change. To compare a non-sequential term to another, you will select one term on the left-hand side of this window. Then choose the gear at the top right-hand side of this window box. From the expanded options, choose the term you would like to compare. To close the window, click the X in the upper right corner. Reporting. Along with the grade analysis tools found on the Unified Classroom dashboard, a teacher also has a handful of reports at their disposal to assist them in student analysis and communicate information to parents and students. These reports can be found by clicking on the analysis charm on the left-hand navigation menu. Then choose reports. While there are only a few reports given here, most reports can be run for different purposes. For example, the individual student report can be run as a progress report or a missing assignment report. The student roster can be run to simply export your students into a spreadsheet or as a field trip list or as a birthday list. Teachers should feel empowered to play with the various settings of the reports and discover many different ways to use any report. 
we will discuss two reports in this training, starting with the individual student report. All reports provide three tabs for the teacher to set up parameters for each report. The first tab is called criteria and is unique to each report. The subsequent tabs, students and format, because the option is in the students and format tabs are the same for each report, we will start by discussing these. The individual student report. The format tab allows the teacher to specify the orientation of their report as landscape or portrait. You can choose whether to use a page break between students or if you want to include row shading. You can set the output option as either Excel or PDF. Some reports only allow PDF currently, while others allow the choice. You also have the option as a teacher to include a note at the top or bottom or both of your report. To do so, make sure you check the box to include the note. Finally, you can choose to add a signature line to the bottom of the report. This is great when running anything you want a parent to sign off that they have seen. The Students tab allows the teacher to specify if they are going to print the report for all students or just a selection of students. The default of this tab is to print the report for all students you teach. Two at the top of this page are a couple of buttons that do not jump off the page as if they are buttons. So it is important to take a moment to pause and really acknowledge that you see these options. One button mode says show selected students and is the default option. Beside that is a button mode that says add slash remove students. If a teacher selects this option, check boxes will appear on the far right hand side of the screen for each student. A teacher can mass select or deselect and then handpick the specific group of students for whom they would like to print their report. At the top of this tab is a checkbox option to include dropped students. This adds students who were initially a part of the class, but no longer are, to the list. This gives the teacher the option to print a report for a student who was no longer a part of the class. Finally, we can move back to the criteria tab. As noted earlier, this is where you will find variation between each report. As a teacher, you will always be able to rename the title of your report. You can then choose which classes you will be printing for, though the default is to print for whichever class you currently have selected in your class selector. At times, you will be given the option of utilizing your custom class name. There is a checkbox that allows the teacher to print the report for a student's full schedule. This is typically utilized by elementary schools where the teacher works with the same group of children for multiple subjects. Instead of setting up the report for each class and running them separately, here the teacher can set the report up once and just print for all classes that student takes. There are several sorting options which include sorting by student or by section and then student. Use this if you are printing for multiple classes. You can also sort the students themselves by last name, first name or student number. Finally, in regards to sorting, you can choose how to sort an assignment data you choose to display. You can sort chronologically or by category and then chronologically. Next, you hit a data area in your setup. This allows you to choose how much or how little data you want to include. In the areas to include drop down, you will find a handful of options with checkboxes beside them. Check the options you want to include. Play around with this and see how simple or detailed you can make this report. You also have options here to show percentages or not, to show assignments with no data or not. You then encounter a date range area in your setup. The options that appear here are directly impacted by the data options you choose to include in your report. If you are choosing to include final course grades, you will have the option to show just the current reporting term or other terms as well. The default is to show whatever term you are currently working within in your gradebook. If choosing to include a list of assignments, it will ask you if you want to set a manual date range or use that current term. If you are choosing to show category totals, a breakdown that shows you and parents how a student performs on homeworks versus tests, then again you can set the date range for the time frame you want to consider. Finally, you encounter the data filters. This is where a teacher can turn a progress report into a missing or incomplete assignment list. By filtering on attributes such as missing or late, 
you can send the report home with an included note at the top that reminds students that they have until next Friday to turn in any missing or incomplete work. You can filter by scores, both assignments and or course, if you only need to send a report home for students who are underperforming. You can also filter by category. Again, teachers should run these reports in many different ways, 